Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dog. Red Dog. Today is special edition uh, with MNK Studio Dubai. So here we are from MNK Studio Dubai, and today special guest too. We have Craig Bernard. Welcome to Red Dog, Craig. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you? Uh, I'm very well. <laughs> very well. <laughs> Happy birthday to Craig. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. So. How to plan for tomorrow? Uh, how to plan for tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> um, wake up early. Uh -huh. Go for a run. And then hit the gym. And then and um, meet with my team. And then and uh, schedule the the next six days. We always work six days. Okay. In a six day cycle. So. And then birthday party. A birthday party is tomorrow. It's tomorrow. At, okay. At uh, Q's. Don't forget, 9 p.m. 9 p.m., yeah. <laughs> so if you guys want to join yeah. with us, yeah. just coming. <laughs> By the time you see this, uh, it will be done. So you, you, you can't get your crush. <laughs> okay. Welcome to Red Talk, Craig, <laughs> once again. Much. Okay, Craig, today we're not talking about tennis, but we're talking about... Mm. Uh, because I just, uh, especially me, I just curious how you, you start for build your business in Dubai. Yeah. Well, I... I had my academy in the UK, mm -hmm. uh, based in Wimbledon. Uh, yeah. I had it originally in Liverpool, mm -hmm. um, and then I sold my academy in Liverpool, and then I rebuilt it in Wimbledon. Yep. And uh, and then COVID hit the the world, yeah. and uh, I decided that everything was open in Dubai in the UAE, yep. and we were closed for 12 months. And I thought, mm -hmm. how long is this going to go on for? Yep. And uh, decided to set up here as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, keep uh, contact with the people back in Wimbledon on a regular okay. basis. We go back there in the summer. We do training camps throughout Europe through the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, I go back uh, at Easter and Christmas time as well and yeah. touch base with the coaches who I uh, become very fond uh, friends with back uh, back home as well in Wimbledon and some some extended family we could call down there. Yep. And uh, and yeah, and I set up here um, basically uh, on my own uh, two years ago. Yeah. And Then um, we, we established a company, and that was seven months ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've got now we're managing five different venues um, in Dubai, and we've got five coaches. We've got mm -hmm. two, two members of an admin team and personal trainer uh, based here now, mm -hmm. um, uh, all very busy. It's very, very busy. Yeah. And um, yeah, and things have gone from, you know, strength to strength since we've been mm -hmm. here, really. It's been... Uh, It's, it's been a bit of a revelation, actually. But it's not. It doesn't mean to, uh, you are tired to be as a coach for tennis, right? No, I'm not. I'm not retiring <laughs> as a coach. But I, I mean, I do do a lot less on court now. Okay. Um, I, I basically just work in the mornings, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. manage the coaches, um, try and mentor them to the best of my ability, mm -hmm. and um, and then uh, over the last say 18 months, I've been investing into various different companies, company startups largely companies that um, I know the owners of. So mm -hmm. they're, they're friends from years gone by, maybe some some, some spreading back 25, 30 years um, mm -hmm. who have set up companies and um, they've seen what I've sort of done and they've said, oh, you know, I'd like you to bring you on board or yeah. I've, I've, I've gone to them and said, you know, yeah. I'd like to get involved. And, yeah. you know, so there's several companies now which, which I'm involved with, um, it, either in a, A, sh a small percentage ownership, or yeah. or, or just being co or collaborating with them and, and coming on board as a, mm -hmm. uh, some sort of uh, benefit to to grow the growth of their business, basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a number of exciting things on the horizon. Um, yeah. Traveling a lot, doing meeting lots of different people, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something that that Dubai and the Middle East um, really sort of lends itself to. Yeah. You can. You can meet so many people from all over the world, mm -hmm. uh, make some fantastic connections. I mean, obviously, like we've connected over the last two years, haven't we? And 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 many other people. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's just going from strength to strength in every area. Really, it's really exciting. That's true. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm I just curious because <laughs> once when I meet him, he's so serious with uh, tennis, but now <laughs> he starts with uh, his own business. So yeah. uh, I have uh, two or three questions, okay. but I write on my phone. So uh, 
I'll try and answer. Uh, so <laughs> you're certainly done a great job build your business. Yeah. I just saw that. So can you tell us what has been the most challenging part of growing your business? Um, the most challenging part is is being able to hire the the right people who yeah. you can trust um, yeah. by, by a long shot. That's yeah. the hardest thing. Um, because we are in a country where pe a lot of people are not born here, you mm -hmm. know, uh, it's, you've got local Emiratis that are born here. Mm -hmm. um, historically, tennis is not a, a a sport that was originated in this country, yeah. and you you basically are outsourcing um, yeah. coaches and, and and staff from from other parts of the world. Um, sometimes people you've never heard of, sometimes you've never met, and you're bringing them halfway across the world to come and work for you. Yeah. And you're investing time and money. You're you're providing them with a visa. You're yep. you're, you're trying to help them out with accommodation. You're yeah. you're pulling them away from their family mm -hmm. uh, into an environment where it's a it's an amazing working environment, but it's yeah. very different. And people do get lonely. They get homesick. They don't know many people. It's quite it can be quite a daunting prospect for a a young man or woman to come over to a new country knowing nobody yep. um so settling those people in is a mm -hmm, is a mm -hmm. is a big task and you that can't be underestimated it's mm -hmm. not a case of they come in they do their job you have to spend so much time with them mm -hmm. you know even small things like setting them up with a car mm -hmm. you know going through all the emirates id process you know yes. it, 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 it's, it's a bit of a minefield when you first arrive yeah. um and if you're bringing in you know, two or three people at a time and you're the person who has to spend the time with them and make mm -hmm. sure that they're, they're settled in because ultimately that's going to benefit your business that they are happy. That's you true, know? yeah. Um, and that comes at an expense as well, financially, mm -hmm. uh, as well as your time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you're doing work yourself, like like for myself, working with, with different companies in different parts of the world. You know, yep. where I'm, I'm working with a, a, f a footballer in Italy at the moment. Um, yep. he, he's got a, a VR brand which we're working with so they're obviously three hours behind in time so i'm mm -hmm. on zoom calls at one two and eight m in the morning because so, mm -hmm. obviously he's a footballer so he's finishing and then we're, we're, we're talking there we've got some a clothing brand in italy as well um which we're, we're working with um, and then obviously we've got built for athletes uh, yep. which is uh two two friends of mine uh one all in particular and his brother who who founded built for athletes and um we've formed a, a really great collaboration Mm -hmm. um, with Red Bull Racing Formula One team recently. And, um, you know, we're, we are now going to be distributing uh, all the uh, all the bags, um, mm -hmm. you know, for, and it's a CrossFit brand originally, and the mm -hmm. UAE and um, and Dubai in particular is a, is a massively uh, active and, uh, and fitness orientated uh, oh, a, a nice. country and city. So yeah. it lends itself well. Um, we've been doing visits to, to Neom, to Saudi Arabia and seeing what the line is going to be operating, how that's going to be operating. And mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, these are these are the, the things I was saying about how it's such an exciting time ahead mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. dealing with that, because obviously we're going to be heading up the, the whole distribution for the Middle East. Yeah, um, which is a which is a big thing, um, and it's a it's a it's a brand that's grown massively over COVID. Oh, nice. um, you know, they're four, essentially they're four years old, um, and in the last two years they've 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 quadrupled, if not more, in in size just within the UK and Europe. And now mm -hmm. we're now venturing out, and uh, to head that up is uh, is a real honour. You know? Can you tell us what brand you collaborate with? Uh, so, so I've collaborated with Built for yes. Athletes. Okay. Um, I've actually got a bag here. I can, okay. I can show you. And so, ah, uh, good quality, of course. Yeah. So, actually, you can have this if you want to. Yeah. There's of course, a, yes. So, I so want that. there you go. There's a that's a present from <laughs> uh, a present from me to you. Um, Backpack. Yeah. So, there. Um, oh and and you can you can customize these, you know, any way you want to. So, for example. Um, customize the size, or you can customize the size, but you, the, you can customize the colors. You can customize. Mm -hmm. This is the camouflage one. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're built for um, you know for hiking and and CrossFit training, and you can put the yeah. bag on your back, and you can do pull ups, you can do squats, you know, you can do all these different things. They're they're the strongest bag in the world. Yes, you know, that's true. Um, I can feel. And it. we're going to be expanding different brands and different things. You know, we're looking at caps and and, and clothing and things like this as well. So mm. it's going from uh, from strength to strength, really, and. Uh, yeah, so when I when I'm sitting in on the the board meeting and discussing the the future potential with the with the with the large investors behind it and backing mm -hmm. it worldwide, it's uh it's really really quite exciting to be part of. So as a businessman, how you maintain everything 
for yeah. for for grow your business. Yeah, I mean, so what we in 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 how do I manage my time? Yeah, to do all this. Um, yeah, it's um, I, I I focus solely on on being being committed to the cause, mm-hmm. being committed to to growing um, the businesses that I'm excited about. Yep. I don't I don't I honestly don't see it as work. Um, okay. I, I don't I don't find it as work I, for the whole of my life. I've I've loved tennis, and tennis was my um, was my passion. Mm. And then in my uh, my early days, when I was tw- 11, 12, 13, I, I loved boxing, and I had crossover between okay. boxing and tennis, and I did a lot of running and lots of training, and and obviously boxing and tennis they complement each other in in it to a degree. But yep. then obviously, if you're going to get an injury, you can't mm-hmm. then play tennis. So I decided to to continue with tennis at the age of sort of fourteen, fifteen, um, in a more serious way. Yep. Uh, Travelled around, played a lot of tournaments, um, and you know, played a, could some very, very good players who've gone on to do very, very good things. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that that was it, it. Was always a passion. And to answer your question, because I, I don't really see it as work, yep. I try and get myself involved with things that I really think that I'm going to enjoy. Ah. And I think that's the key to life. I mean, if you're, you know, there's so many people. I'm so, so fortunate that. Mm. You know, don't get me wrong, when I was in my early 20s and, you know, I'd finished playing tennis and then I was thought, okay, what do I want to do? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I went, I thought, okay, I'm going to be going to Marines was one of my thoughts, you know. So yeah. I did all the training for the Marines and, and we came through that and I met some really great people in that. And uh, and I decided to go the coaching route because I thought, well, I've learned a lot in, mm. in playing and over the years and I can pass that knowledge on. Um, um, but I've always had my own business in that yeah. um, from the age of sort of 21, 22. Okay. Um, you know, and and I had a I had a son at a young age, so the, the, it became quite serious quite young. You know, you have a yeah. responsibility, don't you? And and that was uh, that was one of the big things for me. It was work mm-hmm. really hard. Um, probably not really know what I was doing, but I, mm-hmm. I, I knew how to work hard. And my mum brought us up on her own, and and she instilled that into my my brother and I mm-hmm. that we, we worked really hard and we worked really smart and. That's uh, that's where we're at, really, with it, and 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 obviously the companies that I'm working with, I, I manage it with with a team of people. Um, okay. I understand that in the early days, maybe the first ten years, mm-hmm. I thought I could do it all myself, mm. and and you really can't. If you want to, yeah. if you want to be successful, you have to have good people around you, and that that's kind of where I was alluding to before. Of um, you know, the hardest thing is you know you've got to get the right people nah. um, involved. I have Farah right. who, who's my PA and and she's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I say every day to everybody I couldn't be without her. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's um, <laughs> I know that girl. Yeah, hi Farah. Yeah, yeah, hi Farah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, but she's she's quite incredible. Uh, mm-hmm. And actually, she's just totally run off her feet now. She the poor poor girl's not having a day off at the moment. And okay, um, actually, she's in ho- on holiday right now. So it's, yeah, of uh, course, because she's not trouble. Yeah, yeah. So she's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she, she needs time for relax, yeah, right? So I'm, I'm realizing, you know, when when someone leaves, you realize what, what, you're, <laughs> what you're what you're missing when you have to do everything, you know. So it's um, no, no, she's in, she's incredible, and um, you know, and I, I I don't take her for granted in any way, mm-hmm. you know. It's uh, she's a she's a phenomenal young lady, and uh, you know, it's it's great, and she's really run off her feet. We're, I think we're going to have to get someone else as well uh, in in a short period of time. So good boss. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so tell people uh, where they can find this uh, uh, your uh, so, product. So this is going to be launched in the UAE in literally two weeks' time. Mm-hmm. Um, with the, the Red Bull brand is going to be launched. The Instagram page for Built for Athletes in the Middle East is going to be launched in two weeks. Um, okay. We're just signing off the the full licenses for for retail here. Okay. Um, we also we already do distribute here mm-hmm. um, as a brand, but it's just um, closing it off from the the main company to having it in within within a, a close remit so we will have all the mm-hmm, stock mm-hmm. in on on site sort of in within the country um the the difficulty right now is obviously all the products coming from Europe so then yep. you, you have to pay um export import uh, yeah, and, and uh, so if anyone wants to buy it now they have to then get it what paid delivery charges whereas this yes. will this will make it a lot easier for people to get hold of yeah. and we will be able to deliver on the day um, we will have depots um we're also developing warehouses for multi racket sports yeah. um which obviously we haven't gone into yet um and so i've been down in abu dhabi a lot we're looking at developing indoor because mm-hmm. obviously the heat in dubai is, is and, and abu dhabi in, in the middle east is is quite severe, severe so 
we're looking at building multi racket sports, yep. uh, building, bringing pickleball to the UAE, as long uh, along with the the growth that paddle has already had, and we want to put some indoor courts in yeah. tennis as well. So to have multi racket sports under one roof is something that we we are aspiring to do. Uh, mm-hmm. And within that, we'll have a built for athletes area for fitness. So we'll have personal training yeah. going on uh, underneath the built for athletes brand, mm-hmm. um, and people can basically purchase um from from the the shops that we we have um and then the long term is you know we we will we will get a, a shop in a mall and mm. uh, and have a so it's a, a real focal point for people to go to so how, how many people be as your team for uh so we've got uh, at this moment in time there's there's myself and i have three people working for me um three people. To growing the brand of okay. built for athletes and uh Uh, Farah's sister is actually coming on board mm-hmm. uh, to do the admin side of it. Simon, okay. who you know, Simon. Yeah. Um, he's uh, a, a dear friend of mine. Baby coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's, um, you know, he's a he, he's a, a fantastic uh, personal trainer, yeah. and um, and he's always in the gym. So we'll be we'll be distributing these to the gyms as well. Oh, that's um, why you look you look yeah. good now. Oh, no, I look good now. Uh, now, uh, now, uh, never uh, before. <laughs> Yeah, no. Like Simon's before. Simon's putting me through it at the moment uh, uh, relentlessly. So yeah. So now you so. are uh, on uh, on a diet. Um, yeah. So Simon, what Simon does is, I mean, Simon offers um, really sort of bespoke training. You oh. know? Um, so he he trained a lot of the players in Wimbledon, mm-hmm. um, a lot of the celebrities, the made in Chelsea oh, uh, nice. celebrities, and in, in, in the UK, uh, he spent two years in Spain working with some of the top athletes in the world in tennis, um, and now he's uh, back back with me again from when we were in Wimbledon together okay. and um, he he designs people's uh, the program he conducts the program he delivers the program in a bespoke way um, he will also um, deliver the food make the food so, so you know and, and oh things like that so God. he puts it all together so yeah I don't make food anymore <laughs> that's uh, sounds terrible doesn't it but he um mm-hmm. Yeah, he makes my breakfast and uh, and brings food round. And, You're lucky, boss. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's not going to go on forever. So what he does is actually he yeah. um, he does that for the first month to get people on the right track, and then uh, and then he, he'll train yeah. people, and then they they obviously then continue making their own food. That's why yeah. you know now I'm jealous with him because mm. before uh, he's not. Uh, Real Cispec, mm. but now it's coming to Cispec. Yeah, no, so it's, I have it's, to start it's coming now. back. Hi, <laughs> uh, Simon. Where are you, Simon? Yeah, you have yeah. to start with me too. Yeah, you have to leave me and go to Rio now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to pay him a lot. You know, you have to, you have to pay him. You know. Okay, so now <laughs> you have your own mm. business, and then yeah. uh, of course when people need to uh, uh, get a license for tennis, yeah. just coming to. Uh, Yeah, uh, so tennis. they can go on the website at uh, Tennis yes. Health World uh, DXB. Yeah, speak. Um, or they can um, they can go on our Instagram, Tennis Health World. Yeah. Uh, underscore DXB. Yeah. Um, you, you can you can just message on Instagram. Um, you know, and, that, and that that's pretty big right now. It's grown grown a lot. We yeah. put a lot into the social media. Um, I noticed when I came to the UAE, and not a lot of people, not a lot of companies were, yeah. were using social media. And I thought, well, this is just crazy. It's a yeah. social media world in the UAE. Um, everyone's on Instagram. Everyone's wanting to do yeah. that. So, so capitalize on that. And um, not only tennis, but you have a paddle now, right? Yeah. So now we have it, paddle at the Ritz Carlton yes. in JBR. We have paddle at the Els Golf Club in um, Motor City area in Victory yeah. Heights. Um, which is really good, and and then obviously we've got the tennis courts at the uh, the Western at Minas mm-hmm. Ali, Dubai College yep. in Al Safa, and also the tennis courts at the Ritz Carlton as well. So. Yeah, and then uh, Craig have a personal trainer. Yeah, he's a Simon, right? Simon, yeah. Simon. So Simon then does a lot of the bespoke training for for tennis specific, but also for people who want to aesthetically look better and get better, okay. lose weight, and and just all around confidence. To be honest yeah. with you, you know, people feel better if they That's if true. they feel like they look better, and yeah, and also they're just healthier. You know, if you are healthier, you feel healthier. Yeah, you know, <laughs> That's true. Uh, generally, generally. <laughs> What advice uh, would you give to others who are thinking about starting their own business um yeah i mean in 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 dubai in dubai in everywhere yeah, I mean, so for me i i came here so so this is going to sound um potentially i i mean the people who know me they hear me say this all the time yep don't go out mm-hmm. don't go out socializing crazy mm-hmm. um don't go 
spending loads of money in on brunches and boat parties and and this because I think that's your biggest cardinal sin. I think <laughs> you're smiling. Oh, we've got we've got a cameraman who like who, who's disagreeing with me. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, but it, I, honestly, I think that the, the successes that we've had, I think that it, it derives around that. It yep. really does. I mean, I don't, I don't drink ever. I never mm-hmm. have. I never have actually, and um, I, I don't see the point in it. Yeah. Um, I think it's uh, it's something that really does drive people down the wrong path. Um, I don't. I've never tried a drug. I've never tried a cigarette. You know, I I just don't even bother entertaining those things. Um, I say to people, you know, we weren't born into this world needing those things. Yes. You know, we need water, healthy food and yeah. and, and, and energy, you know. Yeah. So um, get up every day with energy. You've got a great opportunity. People yeah. think that living in Dubai costs a, a, a lot of money. It doesn't. It mm. really doesn't. I mean, I looked yep. at a stat the other day and it's something like London is 17% on average more expensive to live than in Dubai. Yes. And, and you know, when we, some of us, were, you know, the coaches I bought over from Wimbledon. Yeah. You know, they were living in London yeah. and they were earning half the money and spending 17% more. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, and, and you're not paying tax. Yeah. So so it's uh, it's, it's quite a considerable difference. Yeah. But then also on the same token, you've got all these things around you like boat parties, like brunches and, and all these, you know, alcohol. It's, you know, people think that you have to go out and to, cause you, to, to, to feel like you belong. You've got to go and do these things. You've yeah. got to spend money on lavish clothes and drive like, fast cars and rent cars for yeah. three, 4,000 dirhams a day or whatever it is. I wouldn't know. I've never looked into it. But the, what I do know is that that's the, the recipe for failure. And yeah. so many people who have come in the t- two years that we've been here um, have lasted three, four, five, six months, and then mm. they've, they've gone. You know, yeah. it's just very easy to get yourself in trouble, That's and true. and you don't need materials. You know, when once you, if you think about Dubai, you you can all have a really nice apartment. Ninety nine percent of them have got a swimming pool. Yeah, they've all ninety percent of them have got a good gym. Yeah, this is all included in your living. Yes. you know, so you don't need to then. You know, what, what what more do you need? You can chill out by your swimming pool. Yeah, you don't get that in Europe generally. Yeah. You've got a gym at home. You don't have that. You don't have that in Europe generally, and you don't. And, and I, I read the book um, when I first came, "Expat Millionaire" mm-hmm. by Andrew Hallam, and I read it once, and then I listened to his podcast, and then I read it again and made notes, mm. and um, and, I, and and then I read a few others after that as well, while I was sort of setting everything up here, and you know when you're on the plane going back and forth seeing family, mm-hmm. and there was a there was an interesting um, quote in there that he said. You know, if you hunt around for the the right food, yeah. you can you can get food at a very affordable rate. Yes, there's a lot of people who work in Dubai that that don't have a lot of money. They work for for smaller amounts of money, yeah. but they work really hard and they're really lovely people. Yeah, and they survive. So, yeah. so you have to understand well, how do they survive if yeah. they're not earning you know hundreds of thousands of of dollars a year and they survive and they must go to shop somewhere and yeah. eat somewhere. So this was all in this book mm. and it was actually based on Singapore. He was a teacher, a Canadian teacher who went to Singapore and and he said what he did was he he paid somebody a hundred dollars, mm. which was a rem- remarkable amount of money for, to give to this person. So he could follow him around mm. for a couple of days and see how he lived. Because he said, if this guy can survive and I'm a teacher new in the country, I'd like mm. to know how I can survive in the same way because yeah. obviously then I'm not spending anywhere near the amount of money that I'm earning so he, he, he then realised that literally one kilometre down the road they're selling the same cheese as they sell yep. one you know but one's ten dollars and one's two dollars yeah so why would you go to the shop that's ten dollars because it's that's where the tourists go? Yeah. Or you could go down the road and 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 get one for two dollars. And this is what these people yeah. do. And he said, "This is how I'm going to live my life. I'm going to I'm yeah. going to do that, and I'm going to invest the eight dollars." So he invested the eight dollars into index funds, and he's now he's got he's written books and done talks and on uh, economics, and yeah. and he was a teacher, and he was a teacher, and he saved two thousand dollars per month, and he just invested it all and say yeah. and didn't spend spend spend. And you know he 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 widely now talks about how you know he's now now early in his early fifties and he started doing this when he was twenty two and he couldn't get close to the nearest hundred thousand how mm. much he's got he doesn't know and he's not missed out on anything and yeah. he he doesn't he's not a materialistic guy and he's extremely comfortable and you know he said who who you know the the, the quote he says was you know who who pays ten dollars for cheese. Yes, and he, said, he said he said the poor expats do. Yeah. You know, the poor people who come to who live yeah. in these countries. Um and and I thought that was quite quite good and that kind of resonated with me and I thought, you know what, that's just 
you know, when you're in your early 20s and you're earning okay money when I was playing tennis and then I was coaching and things like that, you kind of are a little bit materialistic and you think that these things matter. Yeah. But really, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, very quickly you realise they don't matter. Yes. And the sooner you realise that, the, the more successful you'll be. That's true. So yeah. depends on you choose your lifestyle in Dubai, right? Yeah. So that that's that's the advice I would give. Yes. You know, I, yeah. I drew I drew I drew it out. I gave some examples, but yeah, <laughs> it's a lifestyle. If you if you choose to go in that yeah. go down that that wrong path. Yeah. You know, I, I watch a lot of um, finance situation. I mean, I invest into lots of stocks and fat finance, and you know, mm. a friend of mine runs a a very successful crypto platform, which I've yeah. invested money into as well. It's a, it's a secure algorithm. Well, I say secure, but it's an algorithm where he's got, he's beating, he's beating the market, you know, hands down over and over again. So, um, and he's somebody who I, you know, I, I, I respect him a remarkable amount. And, um, yeah, it's, um, it's, it's, it's definitely the lifestyle, That's which true. you, which you, um, which you should follow and not, um, not, not go down the wrong path. And, these finance, there was a, there was a stat, another stat the other day. I love stats, and um, there was a stat that said sixty two percent of people who come to live in the Middle East mm. go home worse off after ten years than when they came. Yeah, and I, and that that was quite staggering, really, for That's me. True. I was like, how can you come to the Middle East? earn more money than anywhere else in the world, yeah. not pay tax yeah. and go home worse off than when you came. Yes. That, that you have only got yourself to blame. Yes, through that's living true. through living the wrong lifestyle. That's true. Yeah, important. So thank you, Craig, for yeah. your time. No problem. So happy. It's a pleasure. Love his smile. Anytime. <laughs> Now he's yeah. looking younger. You'll, you'll have I'm me back. Ne- you'll have me ne- back next week for more uh, important information, won't you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> see you tomorrow. Okay. On your birthday yeah, party, see you right? Tomorrow, yeah, we'll have a, okay. have a good time. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Thank you. Really. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. thank It's you so much. This is for me, right? It is yours. Um, love you, you so much. Love you too. We got one back. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys, from MNK Studio, Dubai. Ready to talk. See you next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.